Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about Hurricane Ian, now forecasted to rapidly develop into a Category 4 hurricane just in two days with major impacts. So we're going to break down all the details in this video. Welcome back everyone. How's it going? Hope everyone enjoyed your weekend out there. It's going to be a long week ahead tracking Ian. So if, I appreciate all my followers out there and my new followers. If you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, on the tropics and North America, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's take a look at the overall satellite picture this morning of Ian. Remember, we've been tracking this storm literally for the last seven days on this channel, setting up this storm and giving you ample amount of time to prepare. And now it's go time, folks. It is getting serious of this storm rapidly developing last night. You can see the low and mid-level centers are now what they call vertically stacked. You got a hamburger, right? You got all the ingredients of that hamburger. Now it's got the perfect situation and the fuel, the deep ocean heat content and no shear in the Gulf. It's a dangerous setup as things are really gonna be rapidly expanding into a dangerous system and that's going to be lifting west northwest bound and look at this folks the season's getting really busy because yet there's going to be another system right on its heels right now the national hurricane center has a 70 percent chance of this developing over the next five days and if that develops that will be taking the name julia so it was pretty quiet all the way through august but once september started whew, and we still got two months left we got two months left so now let's talk about Ian because this is going to be a dangerous setup with a lot of impact. So here's the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. Right now it's uh, pretty close to Grand Cayman bringing some hurricane force wind gusts for that region. This is going to continue west and northwest. They've already got hurricane warnings and for Cuba. But yeah, this is, look, up, look at this folks. It's going to be dangerously close to Florida. It's supposed to rapidly develop into a major hurricane if not a category four hurricane in just 48 hours from now so that is considered rapid intensification if it's 80 mile per hour winds right now the millibars is 980 80 millibars so it's continuing to rapidly deepen and it's going to be expected to max out somewhere around the 48 hour mark getting really close to a florida and look at that it slows down that is not a pretty setup it feels the effects of this trough and look where the setup is right near tampa sometime wednesday night going into thursday morning dangerously close to tampa that's why they've got the hurricane watches out right now and they're already actually starting some evacuations for that area so we're going to break down all the details and look at the setup this is the latest cone from the national hurricane center look how close it gets right here from cape curl to apalachicola here's the overall path of this particular storm and right now this is the official track from the national hurricane center marks it as a dangerous category four hurricane right off the coast of cape curl but then it continues to lift northbound starting to slow down look at this folks that's a 12 hour window and this is 36 hours from the four to the one that's a 36 hour time frame that kills you that's going to be a very slow moving system it's really close within 40 miles of tampa bay so uh, that is a dangerous setup with high impact winds and rapid storm surge for that area could be a dangerous situation. And the latest update from the HMON model, right? And so I'm not usually a fan of this, uh, this particular model. It is the hurricane model, but it has some greetings because this was the actually only model that actually forecasted Fiona making a direct hit in the Dominican Republic. So right now this would potentially make a direct hit in Tampa Bay. So the official forecast is only 40 miles off and the shift has been shifting a little bit further east as the data comes in. So yes, this could be a dangerous setup and direct hood or not, Tampa Bay is gonna have huge impacts from this system. And that's why they're already actually uh, having some evacuation zones in this area that starts as early as two o'clock today. So things are gonna be going rapidly downhill. So right now, this is the official track. And if this takes the exact track what it is now, that would put a serious storm surge in the Tampa Bay area. Right now, maxing out over 10 feet of storm surge for the entire Tampa Bay area. 
This is actually where uh, Jim Cantori is right now in Clearwater, but right up into Palm Harbor, Harbor, this would be a dangerous setup with all the higher winds. You got the storm surge and then the prolific rain that could be impacting with the very slow moving. It's really expected to slow down to six miles an hour at times, if not creeping at a couple of miles an hour. So that is not a pretty setup with everything that's going to be unfolding. Here's the official guidance from the National Hurricane Center. As far as a potential storm surge, as of right now, we're talking two to four feet in and around the Key West area, back into Charlotte Harbor, about four to seven feet. But yes, once you get up into the Tampa Bay area, that is not a good sign. Five to over 10 feet storm surge. That is just storm surge. You got to imagine you got you know, right now they're forecasting a major hurricane, literally within 40 miles offshore of the Tampa Bay area, pounding the coastline with, with higher winds and then the storm surge pushing that, that water inland. And then the slow movement of this system with the prolific rain, that is not a good combination whatsoever. So that's what makes this a dangerous setup for Florida. As we take you through the simulated satellite, once this gets out into the open waters, of the Gulf of Mexico, that's when it's supposed to be rapidly you know, deepening and it could top out at right around 140 miles an hour with a dangerous eye with, with 165 mile per hour wind gust. And then as it moves creeping, <laughs> creeping northbound, it's gonna be a feel the effects of this trough and that's the situation is, it's gonna be able to slow down and it's gonna be just crawling at times, dumping all that intense winds and heavier rains into Florida. So here's the overall setup on the precipital water value index. And look at the storm system on Wednesday. That things are going to start going downhill in a big way tomorrow, but then especially on Wednesday and then really impact on Thursday. There's all the dry air. I mean, extremely dry air. We had a pretty good cold front that moved through. Now it's almost stalling out right in the almost the Florida panhandle. So you got extremely dry air to the north of that. Once it starts lifting and feeling the effects of that, that's what's makes gonna make that's what's gonna make this system slow down in a big way, and that's what's gonna be concerning with the prolific rain amounts that is expected. So here's the overall setup. We're talking some heavier rains could start in Key West in the southern tip of Florida as early as just tomorrow morning on Tuesday morning. But as we get into Wednesday morning, we're talking about a little bit higher rain amounts, higher higher totals uh, for this area as the storm system will be getting a little bit closer. But by the time we get into Thursday morning, that's where we're gonna have all the significant impacts and compounding. So this this whole area has already had a lot of rain. So this, this area is pretty saturated. So this is gonna be compounding the impacts from uh, this system with all the heavier rains really almost covering the entire state by the time we get into Thursday morning, but except the Florida Panhandle, if it still takes this track. Yeah, if you're right side loaded system, east side, dirty side, if you're in the Panhandle, there's a possibility, you, if it takes the same track, you might not even get a drop of rain from this system. So that's gonna be a sharp gradient and a demarcation line with all the heavier rains are just gonna be inundated because of the very slow movement of this system. And look at the setup by Friday. It doesn't even go anywhere. That is the main concern. So this is going to be a long, a long week for Florida residents. I mean, they're already having evacuation places already. So we're going to be adding to those evacuation spots. And it's just not going to be a pretty setup for the entire week ahead for the state of Florida. And that's why they have a state of emergency uh, right now. So let's look at the setup because this uh, this is not good, guys. When any storm that you're comparing to the worst storm in history back in 1921 for the Tampa Bay area, the National Hurricane Center has been, you know, going back records since 1851. And there's been there's been five. There's been five storms since 1851 that got within 50 mile radius of the Tampa Bay area. And there's only been one that had a direct hit on Tampa Bay. And that was the unnamed storm of 1921. So right now, this storm is forecasted to be just offshore within say that 50 mile range. So that this big, could be like a potentially historic event for uh, Florida, depending on the exact track of this system. So any deviation, any deviation in this track would make crucial, crucial devastating impacts from this system. So let's break down all the models, right? So right now, 
the GFS has been historically a little bit more further west from this system. Uh, the European bottle has been in right along, right along inundating the coastline, but now the UK MET model actually brings it in the soonest. So it's a combination of all these ensemble members, and that's where the track is right now from the National Hurricane Center. So they'll be able to, especially as it crosses Cuba, once it crosses Cuba, they'll definitely be able to really, really fine tune this system and then really get a little bit more precise on the overall exact track because yeah either way it's not going to be a pretty setup for florida so let's look at the hurricane preparedness chart and some of these items you might not know about so it's probably a good time to pause the video and just kind of keep this handy because yeah you, you're definitely may need it especially if you're going to be in one of those evacuation zones right along the coast so this these are all things handy that you need this is one of these situations where you need to prepare for the worst and hope for the best right you need to prepare for this storm because it's got serious consequences in a big way with a lot of the data that we're looking at unfortunately going to be unfolding so where are the evacuation zones right so the florida uh, uh residents they set up a site called know your zone so know your zone on there it highlights all the evacuation zones from pensacola all the way along the coast into tampa all the way down south into naples you know back in back into jacksonville area all these areas have potential evacuation zones and go to that website know your zone and they'll be able to find know your zone and there's actually right now into hillsborough county they're already uh, sending out mandatory evacuations and that starts at two o'clock today folks two o'clock today they're already talking about you know mandatory evacuations and this thing's still in the caribbean so that's why they've got I mean, this is serious folks stuff um going to be rapidly intensifying and then recommended right now is zone b so i'm sure they're going to be adding all these all these evacuation zones so go to that site know your zone and then when that once they issue your evacuation for your area you need to listen to local officials immediately and get out of harm's way so here's the overall setup on the rain amount so obviously it, it really depends on the exact track but most guidance most guidance is basically anywhere from four it could be as much as two feet four inches four inches to two feet from this system and this area right here that's right now forecasted for most of the models just right offshore is really prolific with over two feet rain amount so any deviation from that would send feet of rain into the coast which obviously make a dangerous devastating setup with these slow moving systems i mean you know what happened in harvey i'm not trying to compare this to harvey but just to kind of give you an idea when that thing slowed down and you're right off the coast and you got plenty of warm waters off the coastline and it just sits there and spins and dumps heavy 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 rain for hours and hours and hours this is not a pretty setup folks so any any little deviation in this track would make serious consequences in a big way so right now the weather prediction center has forecasting you know anywhere from 7 to 15 could be as much as 20 inches in some isolated spots like right along the coast but yeah for the united states i mean i, I like i mentioned it's going to be high and dry for a good chunk of the country a lot of dry air really all the energy just gets sucked out of the atmosphere from from ian this this week and it could be inland inland flooding too so we're gonna have to be watching out for tornadoes once it gets uh closer to land and then inland flooding is going to be a huge concern again with this slow moving system so if you live in georgia south carolina north carolina back into virginia even as far far north as possibly tennessee you are going to be on high alert from this system with just the slow moving motion of this system in the week ahead so this is kind of gives you an idea of the overall seven day rainfall total so hey i appreciate you guys uh watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm